And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, one of the most exciting looking booths at Gen Con 2014 was a booth that was showing off Incredible Expedition's Quest for Atlantis. It's a really cool looking, uh, was a cool looking booth, but the game itself looks cool. It's a kind of a steampunk theme. Here you're looking for the drowned city of Atlantis. Brings back some real Jules Verne vibes from looking at this. It can be played either competitively or cooperatively uh, as players go through it. It has some really nice plastic ships, uh, lots of cards. So let's see how exciting this game is. Each player is going to get this player board and they're going to start with one of these starting expedition leaders. You can see here is the uh, beautiful Baroness Alexandria the Huntress. Or perhaps I start with um, unpronounceable Namish Courageous Explorer. Or maybe Professor Pendergrast Delver of Secrets. You can see that the artwork here is obviously pictures of different people. Now, when you take whoever you're going to get, you get starting resources of three different, time, uh, three different types. You have money, heroism, and skullduggery. So you get tokens of those types. You also get a special ability. Uh, she begins the game with a gentleman's gentleman and her crew. So there's the gentleman's gentleman. Now, uh, on your turn of the game, you can take either a rest turn or you can take an action turn. When you take a rest turn, you are going to be using resources to buy more things and basically resting. Uh, as the game goes by, different people will become exhausted. Did you see his face change? Watch, I'll show it to you again. Look, see? There he seems like he's fine. Now he's getting an enema. So anyhow, you have these, you can unexhaust your people when you're resting. You also can exhaust them to get that much resources. You have here on the side of the board a tracker number so that you can see, you know, if I exhaust him, I'll get three green, two blue, and one gold. And I can also use cards from my hand because players will have a starting deck of cards that they'll be able to use some of these cards. For example, this mark of credit, when you play that card, is worth one gold coin. This supplies here can be wor is worth one of each thing. And so you'll have a deck of starting resources that you have. So you want to buy on a rest turn, and there are two decks of cards that you can be buying from. You have your crews and resources, and you pick how many you want. You can take six total. So I can say I want to look at four crew and two resources. So maybe I want to buy the ship right here, or maybe this automaton, the saboteur engineer, or another saboteur engineer. If I buy these, I'm giving it to somebody else because he makes your hand size minus one. And so they all have different special abilities and things. And when I'm buying cards, I can flip cards over to get the resources. I can spend the tokens that I've gotten at the beginning of the game or other ways that you get tokens as the game progresses or play cards from your hand. You can also buy resource cards. These are better cards than the starting hand that you, you start with. And when you buy these, these will go into a discard pile. And when your discard pile is done, you'll be shuffling that and drawing that again. Now, players will have a ship that they're starting with up here at the port city. So there's some plastic ships with the game. And players, as long as they're in port city, can't reshuffle their resource deck. So eventually, after doing several turns of rest, you're going to want to get out there. And then you'll go to a location. And when you go to a location, we'll flip that location over. Here's the factory of a forgotten age. And there's some special things here. Here you can refresh rigor and engineer crew after each encounter. Sometimes there's bad things when you go into them. But most importantly, you need to have two successes to get out of here, to move on. Because you're going to want to move on and eventually get over here to the drowned city of Atlantis and have two successes there to win. When you get a success, you'll keep one of these. 
To do that, you're going to draw an encounter card. You'll turn the encounter card over. Here's a legendary beast. To beat this legendary beast, I need 14, either green or blue, but it has to be all 14 of one. And then again, you can spend crew, you can spend cards, you can spend tokens to get what you need. If you fail, um, something may happen to you on the card, it depends. If you fail, something may happen to you based on the location you're at. And if all else fails, something will happen to you because you'll be starting with a consequence card. So anytime you have to fail, you must have the consequence here. You will sacrifice a random crew member. So you'll roll a die and one of your crew members who are on numbered spots from one to six will go away. So that's kind of a very brief description of how the game works. You're going to be taking a rest turn or an action turn. Rest turns are so that you can build up your crew. Here's a kid and a bodyguard and a radio operator and a clergy and a virtuous lady. It seems like a pretty good crew to go with to get better resources to go into your decks. And then you're going to have these all these people and hopefully a good enough deck so that when you go out, you can survive these encounters. Now, if you are successful with an encounter, you can go again, but you have to use your same hand and everything. You don't get to redraw before you go again, but you might want to try to get another one done, kind of like a push your luck aspect, so that you can get enough of these tokens, so that you can move and leave this memories of a forgotten age, or factors of forgotten age, and go to Temple of the Sightless Gods, which is not a really great place to go to, because there's a special ability there too. Now, these are not all the locations in the game. These, these are all the locations that we're using in this particular game, but there are many location cards that players can use, and you can also set up different uh, spots because you can play a co-op game or a solo game. And when you do that, you'll have um, different rest turn acquisitions for cooperative play, a peril track, and there's a, a deck of peril cards because, hey, the game wasn't hard enough as it was, so we want to make it more difficult. And then you're working together to get to the end. In a in competitive game, whoever ship gets to the end first and gets enough successes there, is the winner of the game. Well, I like the idea of this game, and I like several of the concepts. And on one part, it is a basic deck building game where you're trying to build up your deck and get better cards in it so you can go out and do different things. But it just doesn't work for a few reasons. One, it's kind of a sloggy game. At the beginning of the game, you are building up and it's just a very long, boring 20, 30 minutes as you're waiting for everyone to slowly build up their crew. I'll draw six cards. Hmm, what will I buy? Hmm, <laughs> okay, I'll buy this. No, maybe not. And then when that person's on, the next person buys. And we have several turns of this buying cards type situation before someone finally goes out there and then they get their butt kicked <laughs> by the and bad things happen, they lose their crew members and such, and then they go again. And you just keep going until you finally draw an encounter that you can beat. You beat the encounter, you draw another encounter, and you go on. The, co the co cooperative game is it's a little better because you're working together. Because the game's already annoying enough, right? Having people play uh, curses on you, which can happen, or putting saboteurs in your crew is kind of an annoying thing as you're trying to build this up. Also, the numbers seem to be all over the place. Uh, the, each character in the game has a special ability and you can use their special ability or the numbers on the side. And so you will sit there for the longest time because essentially it's like a puzzle. Each time you get an encounter, it's like you need 14 green. Okay, how can I get 14 green? And you will spend a long time looking. And that's the biggest problem with this game is the downtime. When it's not your turn, even in a cooperative game, it can be kind of boring. And it's also kind of a punishing type game because which in a cooperative game I don't mind so much, but in the competitive it's like, ah, oh, will somebody win already? So it's too long. The artwork is, well, on the cards, the location, the artwork is phenomenally good. Really enjoy that. Love the plastic. But these people, they're obviously real life people. I don't know if they're Kickstarter backers or not. But they once again give that idea of, it's like, hey, I want you to pose for a picture. And then they take the picture. Now I want you to look sad. And they just, they all come across that way. And, and that takes out of the game a bit. There's not a big fan of this uh, real life people in, in games situation. And the graphic design could have been a little better too. The whole graphic design looks a little out of place and uh, it's, some of the tokens are hard to tell apart and things. So 
I know it sounds like I'm downing this game from all sides, and I don't mean to be because there are some interesting things. I like the idea of the deck building. I like the idea of hiring different crews because of their ability. But that neatness and that coolness of having this customized crew on your ship with a customized deck is negated by just how long the game takes and how, honestly, it's not very exciting. Turn a card over, do you have 14 green? Turn a card over, do you have five green and four blue or whatever? And I don't know. Interesting idea, but it could have used more development. Dice Tower Judgment, not good. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.